people are suddenly caught up where they hear the noise of a train. Usually all that happens within 10 seconds. They have seconds to think, seconds to respond, and then during those seconds, they're wondering if they'll even live or die. I was watching the news that evening with the weather alert. We've had bad storms come through in the past. I was in my house because I'm recovering for a kidney transplant. So I'm resting in my bed. And my son, he come into my house and he says, my brother called me and he says the tornado's coming this way. We could see that tornadoes were starting to be uh, caught and uh, you know, captured by, by viewers. And so first thing I did was begin to drive towards those areas. And I was watching the news. We got a confirmed tornado. Let me see. That Round evening Rock. when Round they Rock. showed the tornado touched down at Round Rock on the spaghetti bowl, it was unbelievable. So I went up and began to walk straight into the community. And that's when just house after house, uh, street after street, seeing the destruction was way worse than what one was perceiving. I think it was about six o'clock. We were all uh, sort of in the same room. And, uh, and just like you hear a million times, it does sound like a freight train. I put them in the tub and, and we tried to grab some pillows off of the couch. A board came and would have hit Sam right in the face. It's got nails on the end of it. The cushion prevented him from taking a hit to the face. And I used my legs and I pressed against the bathroom vanity, the sink vanity, and then my back, <clears throat> my back was to the door. I have insulation in me. My back was to the door and I just tried with all my might to not let the door open. I literally thought that was gonna be it. Like a bomb. I see the news when the bomb hit something that they looks like. We don't have nothing, not even shoes. The kids crying because the toys, the uh, laptop they have for the homeboys, we don't have nothing. They feel like, oh my God, what am I do now? But I see my kids crying, all the kids crying. And I'm like, come on, Christina, you need to be strong at this time. So uh, I just ask them, uh, you know, on the Monday that the tornado hit, what did you feel? I never forget one word that came out a few times was the word vulnerable. All of a sudden we felt vulnerable. They didn't have control of what was going on. And they said it was over so fast. It was loud and over so fast. And then it was just silence. Our disaster relief team starting that night of the disaster, they were already mobilizing. The field operations manager starts calling in his teams. And so the first step is collecting that vital information to say whether they have insurance or no insurance, to whether they lost a vital car, whether they uh, had insurance on a rental or a home, because that tells us a lot in terms of the kind of money that we'll need to raise behind them. And part of the process is they ask is, do you want a shepherd? And a shepherd is someone that'll walk along with the family, it's the family that we're shepherding, providing them additional information because they've never been through anything like this. You know, and they love us bringing them the assistance and helping to give them an the opportunity to talk to somebody and just kind of process what they went through. Obviously, we want the gospel to go forth, but you win the opportunity to be heard as you become the hands and feet, taking care of neighbors, taking care of people, just being there when they're going through what they're going through. I tell you, I've been to a lot of disasters. You don't have nearly this amount of homes with this kind of destruction and no deaths and no major injuries. Now, I, uh, I think one day, at the time, one day at a time, because you never know what happens. Today we're here, we don't know if we, next day we're here or not. So I appreciate more the life right now. I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm happy. Still that the bad stuff happens, but I'm happy because we, we're still here. I'm a firm believer that as believers in Jesus Christ, we were never called to be spectators. We were always called to be involved in other people's lives. And so I know that if a person doesn't get about to serving and taking care of others, they're just gonna get fat and lazy. So we're called 
to be servers. This is what I envision, picture, dream, is that the survivor is impacted. First thing they do, they call our call center. Our call center is filled with Christians that not only gonna love them, they're gonna pray with them. So it's the first touch point. Then we have our cleanup teams going out. We know that a Bible is gonna be given to them. Not only will their home be clean, but these Christian volunteers are gonna sign it and be able to give away some hope, not only in the cleanup work, but the hope in the Word of God. And then they're gonna be invited to our thrift store where loving people are gonna give them a clean environment to be able to handpick five sets of clothes for free per family member. And then it comes to the shepherding model where we'll actually assign an individual or a group of people to walk with that family, which is another touch point of Christ. That's what I, I love about the way that the church is responding in this because we get to reveal the face of Christ in so many different ways that by the end, the heart of a survivor melts and they say, I wanna know this Jesus, or I need to know this, this body that loves people. I wanna be part of that family.